Lesson 1G, Isolating Variables by Formula Manipulation 1. Use SAMDEB to isolate your variable. Look at your formula, identify the variable you are solving for, and determine all the operations being performed to it. Undo those operations by following the order of operations backwards. The acronym SAMDEB stands for Subtraction, Addition, Multiplication, Division, Exponents, and Brackets. As you'll notice this is the order of operations backwards. Also note, the contents of brackets are performed last. 2. Perform the opposite operation. When removing the operation to the variable that's to be isolated, perform the opposite operation that you see being performed to it. Divide if you see multiplication, multiply if you see division, add if you see subtraction, subtract if you see addition, square if you see a square root, and square root if you see a square. For example, take a look at this equation, t equals x plus c. Now let's say that we're trying to isolate the variables x, which we'll identify or highlight by circling in red. What we will do is consider all the operations being performed to x, which is add c. To isolate x, what we'll do is simply subtract c. x c minus c makes 0. Remembering your algebra from grade 8, 9, and 10, You'll remember that if you perform an operation to the right-hand side, the only way you can keep your equal sign is if you perform the same operation on the left-hand side. So we'll have to subtract c on the left-hand side as well. Our formula now will look like this. t minus c equals x. It can be rewritten so that the left side is the right side and the right side is the left side. x equals t minus c. And that's our final answer. 3. Do the same thing to both sides. To keep the equal sign, any operation you do to one side of the equation must also be completed on the other side. You'll remember this from grade 9. When manipulating equations, the left and right side will only remain equal if you perform the same operation to both sides. To illustrate this, x equals x. If we go ahead and perform an operation to the right-hand side, such as add 5, we'll see that x plus 5 does not equal x. To keep the equal sign, we'll have to add 5. We can continue this. x equals x. If you multiply the left-hand side by 2, you will notice that 2x does not equal x. We'll have to perform the same operation to the other side. And so on and so on. 4. Distribute or don't. Distributing a coefficient to remove brackets may or may not make the isolation process simpler. You may remember from Math 9 that a solution to having brackets is to distribute the coefficient using the distributive property. In isolating the variable, this may or may not complicate things. Let's use the equation z equals t x plus y as our example. Let's assume that we're solving for t. I'll, I'll highlight it in red. Some may choose to distribute the t to remove the brackets. By doing so, the equation now becomes We've gone from 1t to, to having to deal with 2t's when we're isolating. In many cases, distributing the t would make the isolation process more simple, but in this case, it makes it more complicated. 5. Brackets and division bars. The division bar of a fraction implies an invisible set of brackets around the numerator and around the denominator. This means that depending on where your variable to be isolated is in the fraction, you may have to deal with the other portion of the fraction first. So remember, when you see a fraction of the form, such as s equals t plus 7 over 3l minus 6, there's an imaginary set of brackets around the numerator and around the denominator. Lastly, some useful math rules. n divided by n is 1, as long as n does not equal 0. n minus n is 0. The square of a square root, or the square root of a square, is equal to the base. m times n equals n times n, also known as the associative rule. And finally, m plus n equals n plus m, or m minus n equals minus n plus m, also known as the commutative rule. Now let's take a look at a few examples.